All right. They're small ones. Just, unless you want more, then we can pour some more. That's good. I know this is my favorite. Really Damn, cool. I think I poured you a lot too. Someone sent Sorry, me, because I, I reposted what you tagged me in, and uh, someone's like, oh, that tequila is really good. And I was like, this is the first time I actually buy this one. So, we're going to see. good stuff about it. What is All it? Right. Casa Amigos. Casa Amigos. Right, there it is. There it is. That was really good. Before 12 p.m. All right, let's do it. Sorry, I've been drinking since last night. <laughs> <laughs> now, Dylan has an issue about drinking, so. No, I don't. You see, Dylan <laughs> telling me I have to go to AA meetings. So, Papa, you, you turn 21 and right away you hit the bottle hard? <laughs> um, Dylan. <sighs> nah, I just I decided to. Everybody message Dylan right now if you've seen this. Message him. Where's it encouraging? Say you love him. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's see. After, dude, it's been a while, but I hope by the time you guys are watching this, you guys have your either your cafecito, your energy drink. If you're drinking so much in the morning, prayers to you. But in the house, we have Alma, the owner of Top Notch, in the house. Let's go, baby. What's up? What's up, you guys? This is at 11 o'clock. We're already buzzing. I know. We're gone. I'm just kidding. But thank you for finally coming out. I know this is a little, it's on a Sunday, you know, everything is kind of relaxed, but how are you? How is life going for you right now? I'm doing well. First and foremost, I want to say thank you, you know, from the bottom of my heart for this opportunity. Um, this is like surreal. <laughs> like I told you when I came in here, like I'm from West Covina, like I'm not like, I don't know, it's just like. It's different. We're in downtown LA, like there's this beautiful loft and I'm doing a podcast. So, like, it's, that's how I'm feeling. Life's good. Life yeah. is good. When you start doing things out of your comfort zone, as, like, you'll realize it soon enough that, yo, know, like, you're just meant to be in these situations, in these places, because you've built it enough. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, Definitely. you have your husband chilling in the backside <laughs> right there, my boy. Oh, baby. Um, but let's start from the beginning. Alma. Owner of Top Notch, you're a business owner, right? Why did you get into business? Should a woman in business is not really known, right? Like it's either talked talk down upon, people don't believe in it, and especially when you started, people don't believe you're going to succeed in it. Yeah. So let's start from the beginning. What got you into opening Top Notch? All right, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do I'm it. ready. You guys want to know? Got to know the deal. <laughs> um. If I'm going to be honest, you know, like I told you, I I have to start from the beginning. Let's do it. And I might cry. And I'm prepared for that. I'm ready, too. I'm, you got a shot in me, sir. <laughs> at before 12. <laughs> Fuck, should I get another before one? Before <laughs> 12 p.m. You guys know I do not drink. <laughs> Dylan, can you bring me the Casamigos? <laughs> I need one. Yeah, so we got that going on. And this is just. Do you want one? No, no, no. no. I'm good. Yeah, you're good. Uh, yes, I actually do have my cup, Dylan. I'm good. Another and shot, I'm going to be like this. Mira, I see Shout you. out, Dylan. If anybody's coming to the podcast, they know Dylan is the server. Damn, boy, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ever get served up by Dylan. Oh, my God. <laughs> All right, but let's start from the beginning. All right, you guys. Very beginning. Just, let's do it. This is just the beginning. This is just the beginning, okay? Why? Why did I choose to open a business? I, I'm going to start from the beginning, you guys. It, it stems from my childhood, and this is something that I've never shared, like, in full detail. We got the inside scoop. With absolutely anybody. It's all right. You know, these are, these are the moments that make us. When you, you take a... It's beautiful. You take, a, you take a, a moment where you look back at everything you've ever done. You look back at the times you, where you triumphed. You look back at the times where you were at your lowest, and then you look at the time that you're in right now and how far you've came. And you did it. You're doing it. So at this, hey, bro, like, we got to. We got to. 
<laughs> we got to. We With the water and here. happy dad, you already know. All right, let's compose myself. All right. The people who know, who know. We got to suck these back up, okay? <laughs> Suck these back up. Yes, ma'am. Cloudy with the chance of meatballs. You don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, you guys, um, this is just the, the truth. I lost my mom when I was 14. She was overweight. Mm. I saw her struggle from the earliest I could remember. Yeah. And being in the business that I'm in today... Helping people achieve their health goals. Overcoming the statistics of genetics. And this is just how I'm born. Breaking the... That curse. Yeah. That generational curse that you hear so much of. You're, oh, you're going to be this. I'm full circle. Yeah. I'm full circle. I, I understand that everything in my life... I had to go through it in the way that it that it panned out. Thank you. Thank you, Dylan. You. Thank, Thank you, you Dylan. So much. <laughs> Dylan, you the man. You he is, he is. That's why everybody all the fans love Dylan. Yeah. Everybody um, shoots us DMs and Dylan, Dylan. Hey, <laughs> go down <and> DM. <laughs> they really do. Um, you guys, that's just the truth. Um but you went full uh, you went full circle. My full circle, I you saw beat, my mom's You struggle. beat the statistic, and I think that's the most beautiful thing you're saying in your story because you lived through something, and you decided to take it upon yourself to be like, yo, I need to make a change. Like, it's going to stop here. Yeah. Like, in my lineage, I don't see obesity. Mm. I don't see diabetes. I don't see my kids not being able to enjoy life because of their body because that's all i remember you know as an adult now you kind of see things are you a parent you're a parent correct i'm a parent of two you know i'm a i'm a mom of two myself and you see things just in a completely different perspective because you can put yourself in in that parental point of view yep exactly and you remember your childhood and and Damn, like, you see yourself going through things in life. We going to go through things in life. After. My we get, whole journey, you guys are going to hear. We go through things. Yeah, no matter what. Like, it could be today. It could be tomorrow. It could be uh, later in the week. But that's the one thing that I tell everybody. Like, I had my first, my son, uh, I think Brittany was pregnant when I was, I turned 23. It went full circle. It wasn't because life was bad or anything, but it came in a point of our life that, we may have not been good, but I was not as responsible as I needed to be. And as soon as, hey, I'm pregnant, I said, all these little games are ending, which is I need a savings. Yeah. I need to move out of my mom's house. <laughs> Everything full circle until right now. And I posted it earlier in the week. Like, if I'm going to tell my kids to go chase your dream, I want you to follow the example that your dad is chasing his dream no matter what. Because I remember clearly someone told me, once you have kids, everything stops. I was like, no, man. Not today. That's that not the way be. it goes. Yeah. It's the truth. You know, I, I talked to really quick. I know we're going to get into this spiral every, of conversations. Yes, ma'am. Um, every time I talk to these young kids that come into my business, you know, I, I serve a lot of high school students, a lot of college students, um, a lot of single people. And, you know, I tell them all the time, like, enjoy your, enjoy your single life. You know, because it, when you have kids, it's not that your life stops. Yeah. It's just not about you anymore. No. At all. That does not mean that you can't pursue your dreams. That does not mean that you can't do everything that you want to do in life. You want to travel? Great. Travel. Yeah. You know, your kids are going to grow up experiencing things that you didn't get to do. You know? Like, I've, I've been so blessed to be able to travel in my journey, and it's beautiful to know that my kids are going to grow up with that. So I'm, I didn't I didn't get to do that when I was a child. So you brought that up right now. And everybody listening in, whether it's on YouTube, Spotify, Apple, thank you guys. What is one thing you've done with your kids that you didn't do as a child? <clears throat> Honestly, like, just enjoy life. Mm. And that's sad. 
it's so sad, you guys. People don't know what a lot of these kids today are dealing with. When you hear the word happiness, what comes to mind? Happiness to me is waking up every day and just being excited for what is to come. You know, yeah. like waking up like I get to go to work today. I get to go to the gym. I get to take my kids to school. I get to make a shake for my husband for breakfast. <laughs> I get to make him his tea. Like I get to do all these things. Like I'm grateful and I'm happy. Like, and it's yeah. beautiful to be here. Like you said, we're here today. It's it's really that's what happiness means to me. Damn, that's crazy. You gotta give it up. You gotta you know. You got to give yourself the flowers. The beautiful thing about this podcast, as much as everybody that knows us, knows us on and off camera, and do we like to drink? Yeah, we do. That's why it's called the Toasted Life, <laughs> because we don't, we don't fake the fun. We go out, we go have, have fun, we enjoy our life, we go and drink. But what I tell everybody is when you're out with your friends and you're having a great time, and, it's, and whether you're drunk, sober, buzz, whatever the case is, you're having a great conversation with that one special person that you're doing it with, and you're just like, fuck, bro, we did it, man. Cheers. Doom. And like at that one moment in life. Yeah, you, you, you look back. I mean, how they say, when you're drinking, the truth comes out, right? The truth always comes out. <laughs> but the beautiful part about us is whether we're drinking or not drinking, we're just really this. Unapologetically, this is who we are. Shout out Ashley sitting in the back. That's what we are. Like we're like no matter whether you like the come, whether you like what we said or you don't, we are who we are, and this is our story. This is our experience. How Kevin Gates says, "I'm him." Whatever you think I am, I'm that person. You know what I mean? So you're and going. I can relate to that. Like what you just said right now. You know, you are who you are, whether yeah. you're drinking or not. And I can relate to that so much because I talk to so many people every single day. Yeah. And everyone who knows me and everyone who enters my shop knows that, like, they don't just go in there and grab a shake and leave. Like, I'm going to ask you how your day was. I'm going to ask you if you have plans this weekend. I'm going to ask you if you come the next, the, the week, the day after the weekend, like on Monday, Tuesday, I'm like, how was your weekend? How was that wedding you went to? Yeah. Like, I'm so big on, like. The relationships. That, that contact, like that. I'm so big on, like, like understanding that we're all on our journeys and we're all just like meeting each other and we're just having that moment like you know that that that, that conversation is genuine so to bring it back into the business part because it it is important because i think right now like our goal my goal is to help inspire people like to take the chance on themselves yeah. so to take a chance about opening a business to you know do content whatever the case is taking a chance when you took the chance to open it up you know, coming from your origins that you just said, what was the hardest thing that you had to endure as a business owner? And, like, you didn't know, and then you had to find out. Yeah. Um, the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I I just, it's hard. Yeah. Especially when you're, you're like, building a foundation. You know, I come from yeah. multi-level marketing where, where if you have a great upline, and this upline did what I'm doing right now. They're doing the work yeah. to be able to duplicate something very simply. Yeah. Um, you you hit a gold mine. Mm. That's how it is in multi level marketing. You have to be very specific with who you choose, and that's something that I don't take lightly. And that's why I, the people who follow me, you guys know that I don't recruit. Like it's very rare that I post anything about recruitment. Because I believe in relationships and I believe in trusting your energies and I believe in the vibes and I believe that whoever you choose to do business with is your choice. Yeah, my bad. Oh. <laughs> um, <sorry. laughs> my boy, come on. <laughs> <laughs> so, You're good. so, you know, that's, that's, that's what I believe. And, and when you're in multi level marketing, you know, for those of you who know what multi-level marketing is, you choose somebody that you're going to you're gonna do whatever business that is with, you know? It has to come naturally, you think? Yeah, I believe that it has to come naturally, whether you've been following that person for, like, quite some time and you've... You guys know, you guys are on social media. Like, you build... I really, am. You build, not him. Uh, my, yeah. boy, my boy here is not on social media. He, he, as much as I push him and everything, he has to do it himself. <laughs> he, has to, he has to... But the social media part is... It's his own business, right? Mm -hmm. Like, 
either there's times that you're posting, there is the algorithms, there is the trendings, the trends, whatever the case is, but it's like, if you're missing a day, then that's a day too late already. Like, you have to be on top of it all. Yeah. And that's part of business. To get, and right now, the free market is social media. You can grow your business off of TikTok. You can grow your business off of IG. But you have to put that time and effort. Yeah. It's work, you know? Like, that's why a lot of people want to work from home and they see, like, oh, I'm not just going to post a picture and become famous. Like there's there's a there's so much more that goes there's into work. Got to put in work. That. And and that's such a crazy misconception to me that people pass so much judgment on people who like are on social media like living like the life of your dreams probably. And you know, yeah. You to, guys know how it is. To spice it up, would you judge for Herbalife? Boy. <laughs> I got to spice it up, you know. We're gonna, I'm going to ask that question Dang. that I know a lot of people <laughs> A lot of you people that what? are listening in are going to be like, man, that's... I'm going to be real and honest with you I guys. Unapologetically. It's all about your first experience. Mm. That's just what it comes down to. It could be any business. But Herbalife that's... specifically, you guys know, has this whatever people want to think about it. I, I don't know because I know what I know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm very big on like, you can think what you want, but this is my experience. I've been taking the products for over 11 years. Ooh. I look the way I look, you know. Um, I have a successful business. You know, I can do my business from home if I wanted to. Yeah. I get to talk to people every day. I get to build relationships. Like, you can believe whatever you want, but this is how it went for me. And my first experience with Herbalife, you know, thank you, God, <laughs> um, came from my husband. You know? Shout his, out. <laughs> his mom. Let me tell you, my suegra is popping. My sweater looks good. Like, that's just the truth. If you got a fine-ass suegra, like, you're lucky. So, my suegra is very much into health. Ooh, that's important. She is active. She has been taking the products for over, what, 20 years probably. And she's not a distributor. <laughs> she does not want to do the business. She just loves the product so much. And that's why I truly believe whatever you're doing in life, you got to be a product of the product. Yeah. In order for you to like sell a product, to promote a product, like if you're not, if you're not taking it and it's been a while, like, bro, you cannot promote it because no. you can, I'm going to buy Happy Dad and okay, I'm going to promote it. I've only been drinking it two days. Why am I promoting it? But everybody that knows us, even now, like any party I go to with my boys or whatever, I got my case. I'm like, bro, I'm I'm not him if I if I don't bring that case. But you have to believe in the product. You have to be taking the product. And how you said, look at me. I am the product. Like yeah. everything I've been taking, this is who I am, how I look. Yep. So do you guys go out to eat by yourselves? Yeah. Do you guys get a hit on? <laughs> free drinks. Right? They didn't get free drinks. <laughs> it's it's uncomfortable for me personally, but it happens. Uh, some we was this is two weeks after we've been in San Diego, and I think the first time we're out, we're pretty much sober. So we saw. I think it's it's always funny when you Hilarious. see when you see fun when you see things in a sober view. I knew you were going there. Oh, man, it's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> we went to a whole nightclub one time, like a whole club, like sober. Got dressed up and every sober. It's just weird, huh? <laughs> there, we were like, this what? It, it was the funniest. It was like you walked into like a whole new world. It was like, the funniest thing because they didn't put a drink down. Like probably only water that was there was because of the ice. And some <laughs> oh. dude literally came, got the cup, drank it. But he was like super gone, right? And what I'm trying to get to is when you go to places, right, especially by the way you look, it just depends. Like, they'll treat you a certain way. Mm -hmm. Guys get treated a certain way. Girls get treated a certain way. But when I'm transitioning into business, when they see a guy running a business, they're like, oh, he's successful. When they see a girl running a business, they think a guy is running it because it's successful. I got a story. Shoot it. I'm ready. Right. Let's hear it. hear it. You want to hear the cheese? We want the me. tea. You guys, this happened like three weeks ago. Three weeks ago, this guy comes into my shop. And I remember I called Edgar, like, right after, because I was so mad. <laughs> I was so mad. 
He's like, I got the phone call right here. And that's one thing about me, you guys. I'm so good at, like, when I'm inside my business, I'm going to treat you nicely. I'm going to kill you with kindness. You could be the rudest to me. Yeah. And I'm going to be so fucking nice to you. You're going to hate you me. you being rude yeah. is just like you just fucking being rude to me. Yeah. Because I have no hate in my, in my heart. None? None. Zero. Zero. I want good for everyone. I want love for everybody. Even saying I hate, I tell my kids all the time, I hate using the word, like, I hate. Yeah. I hate that. I hate this. I hate you. Oh, yeah. That's, like, dangerous. That's a very strong it's word. It's a strong word. Yeah. You know, but going back into what we were saying, um, Came into you know, the this shop. guy comes into the shop, and, like, I, I serve him up. He was asking me, like, random questions, like, oh, you're the owner of the shop. And I was like, yeah, you know, this is my shop, whatever. And he was like, oh, your husband must have money. Ooh. Ooh. He was like, oh, your husband paid for this. Ooh. And I was like, I wasn't going to get into an argument with the customer. Yeah. He can fucking think whatever he wants. I'm not here to defend myself. Like, right, so how do, uh, I know what I know my husband and I have. This is our business, actually. Yeah. I'm just the face of it because I run it. My husband is on the lease. Everything that we do together, every situation Damn. like we've ever been to, it been through. Yeah. He's known about it. Everything, everything, every single thing that happens in my shop, every frustration I go through that I don't share, he knows. It. He knows. So like, if that guy wanted to think whatever he wanted to think, fine. He doesn't know that I had to take out a loan to open up our our business, and we made a goal to like pay that loan off in five months, and we did. Ooh. After opening a business, damn, that's, that's. I didn't have to tell him that. I don't have to explain shit to him. I was just like, nah, this is what it, I told him. I was like, yeah, if you want to think that, he did. That's fine. It, there's, there's always things that somebody does right, and it can be that you bought a new car. And funniest story is, I mean, no, I hate throwing. I'm not gonna throw shade on certain people, but there's certain people that were a part of my life during that time that I bought my first car. I'm not gonna, and I don't lie to nobody. It's like, yo, my dad co-signed because my dad has impeccable credit. I had zero credit, so he co-signed. I paid everything. The most stupidest decision I've ever made in my life, and this is for anybody that wants to sell their own car when there's not enough. <laughs> You're upside down. I ended up selling it, got in another, the same fucking car, just bigger engine, faster, but I took my dad off the the title, and after I got it, I, there was somebody told me when I pulled up, "Oh, your dad got you the car." And I'm like, no. And the funniest thing that people don't believe: my dad has his own business. He's a business owner. He's had his business, I think, now for ten years. I've worked for him for five years. When I started making money, I told him, "I'm not gonna work with him. I'm gonna go find my own stuff." So I worked for a telephone company. I did my desmadre. I did my thing. <laughs> and I bought my cars because I did that. Until I knew there, could, there's, there was no more growth, I was like, you know what? I'm going to quit. I'm going to come to you. I'm going to do this, but I'm going to earn it. And a lot of people didn't know is when I came to him, I was making X amount of money. And I, boom, <laughs> he dropped yeah. me back down to, you're starting over here. And I'm like, okay, cool, whatever it is. It is what it is. But the biggest thing was, Someone told me, like, yo, your dad bought you your cars. That's the part that's, those are triggers. They're, they're triggers, but now, and one thing, like, I'll, what's your favorite artist? Do you have a favorite artist right now? Bad Bunny. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> you, if you know, you know. If you know, you know. Just saying. TikTok right there. Yeah. Um, mine is Kevin Gates. And one of the things he said during an interview was, when you entertain a clown, you become part of the circus. That part. Yeah, and that was, like, once I heard that, it resonated so much because there is people that talk a lot of stuff. There's people that are always going to hate, have something to say about you, and try to be confrontational. But if I if I confront you and start that, then I'm going to be a part of that circus. You're stooping down to that level. Yes, exactly. And Angela, that who unfortunately couldn't come today, she knows that. And I told her, like, yo, if you snoop down to those people's level that are trying to get you mad out of your zone... You're going to entertain the circus. Yep. Well, what was the thing that he said? He was like, 
hey, the world's full of suckers, uh, full of lollipops. I can't be another sucker. I'm like, nah, I can't. It's true. And, I, I mean, I was tested, but it's the same thing. Like, nah, bro. Maybe you're, how you said, hate is a big word. So it's a strong, it's a very strong word, and it can go a long way, and it can affect you in ways that you don't even know. My thing is, I'm not going to hate you. Maybe you're just missing certain things in your life where you have that in your heart right now. But They were triggered by your success. And I hope one day you find that emptiness. You find what you're missing. And I hope, I mean, maybe sometimes people need hugs. I know. That's what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> people need love. Like, there, there's, like, so much chaos going on. And, like, we just need to love more. Like, yeah. if you just, like, never took anything personally that people said to you and just, like, poured so much love into people... Like, I promise, like, not only is your day going to be better, but, like, it's not, like, the bar is valar. Like, it's not going to matter to you what people yeah. say. And that's, like, a concept that I've adapted, like, with reading books, doing personal development, and also, like, having my husband. Because he's so, like, like strong-willed and very, like, strong-minded that, like, he, like, when people try to come at him, he'll tell me stories sometimes. People try to come at him, he just kind of, like, it's kind of, like, the fuck? Like, okay. Yeah. Like he kind, of, it doesn't like it doesn't phase him. It's weird, and that's huh? like, you know, things that you you grow through in your relationship. You learn the best from your partner, and that's just something that I've adapted from my partner. He's you, so like strong willed, and like just when people are being what they're being, like he's just like whatever. There, there's there's certain energy in in a room, right? Like, and the people sitting here. Um, they figured it out. Well, Dylan, bef like recently, me and Ashley, I know we've done this shit a long time ago, where we had figured out that the people we were sitting at the table with were the most toxic ones. And there's no hate on none of them, and I'm sure they listen to it. I'm sure they still listen in and hate on it. It doesn't matter. But it's unfortunate that some people still want to sit at a table where they're not loved. Like, you want to be embraced. Like, as soon as you walk in through the door, people are happy to see you. and They're so excited to see you. Like, that's really quick. I'm sorry to cut you off. But that's dope because I have never met you. Yeah. And I was telling my husband before we walked in here, like, I can't, like, I'm so excited. And he was like, I'm so excited for you. And it's it, like, we've never met. And you're right. Like, you, yeah. you want to be in rooms where, where the energy is matched. It, you have to. And, and the reason why I believe you have to be in those type of rooms is because maybe you were going through whatever you went through during that week. And that one day you show up at whatever place and you're embraced by love. You're just like, bro, like I needed this, <sighs> you know, like I needed this so much that I didn't even know it. And it's like, yo, like there's times where you're going to be tested and there's going to be times where you're going to realize that maybe the, the table that you're sitting at isn't for you. Because maybe you have a lot of dreams and aspirations and the people sitting there are just complacent and they're okay with what they got. Yeah. And it's like, no, nah, man, like how I think it, we, they, if you're on social media, I'm sure you heard it on a short video, TikTok, whatever. Like if you're in a room full of successful people, like you're going to be the next one. Mm -hmm. But if you're in a room full of people that got nothing going for them, no dreams, no aspirations, no no grind in them. Nothing, no drive. Like, if we got to talk about getting drunk on the weekend instead of talking about what we got to do in the week, like, nah, man, I don't want to talk to you. Tell like, me who your friends are and I'll tell you who you are. Shout out my mom. She hey, tells me that. The whole time. <laughs> <laughs> hey, she told me that. Hispanic, so yeah, she told me that she, yeah, she told me from the beginning. Dude, Dime that's con been quienes, instilled in my mind. Dime con quien, es, con quien estás de dir quien eres. Yeah. And it, they're just lessons that we take from back then that... For me, I didn't pay attention until now. Like, since we started the podcast and we did the whole thing, like, now I instill everything. Like, oh, wait, they told me already. I just never listened. Yes. Until now, I'm like, okay, I can listen. Yes, you your know? ears are open. Ears are open. And you're really listening now. And then it, it, you remember things that maybe you ignored. Or maybe we knew they were there. We, maybe we caught the vibe. We just didn't, like. We wanted to learn the hard way. Yeah. Like, you're, you're going to tell me right now what's happening? And I'm going to be like, nah, you're full of shit. <laughs> and then I'm going to learn the hard way and be like, damn, she was right. But I'm not going to tell her she was right because now I give her that leverage that she was right. Isn't but, that so crazy, like, the way people work? That's toxic old things right there. <laughs> oh, that's the next topic. This is, for the people listening in, this is how oh. the conversation sparked up to be on a podcast <laughs> talking about toxic. 
What's your love language? What's my love language? We're starting okay. this right now. Yeah, all right. Um, I like... Um, we have the confirmation right there, so... Yeah, he knows. I like words of affirmation. Okay. You know? Um, I like gifts. And to me, gifts doesn't have to be, like, like thousands or hundreds of dollars of gifts. Like, what was the most important gift you received? Or most uh, heartwarming gift that you got that wasn't expensive? Letters. Every holiday, like, he Damn. gives me, like, like a card, and he writes something in it. And I keep all of them. He writes letters. He shows you love, affection, affirmations. How important is that in a relationship? To me, like, that is, like, a high priority. So, you know, I'm, I'm grateful that we kind of started our relationship like that. He knows that I like to write. Like, I love to, and it's so awesome to see your kids, like, come out with these, like, traits that you carry. Your kids write, my too? my kids, they don't write, like, letters or stuff, yeah, but yeah, they yeah. draw. Ooh. Like, my, my, my oldest son is, like, I could tell he's going to be an artist. Like, it's dope to see, like, your, your kids, like, have a talent. Like, they're telling a story through the, the painting or drawing that they're doing. Like, it's, it's really dope. So, so, you know, going back to what I was saying, like, we started, I love to write letters and stuff like that. So, I, like, I, we met in college. So, I would be in class, like, bored AF, like, I'm going to write my boyfriend a letter <laughs> instead of paying attention. Okay, whatever. It's like being on TikTok today. That's what it is. No, like, it's not. No, it's, <laughs> it's not. You're right. But it's distracting. <laughs> instead of paying attention, I would always write him letters. And it wasn't, well, every now and then I would write him one that said, Dear Edgar, I hate your stinking guts. <laughs> and then I would be like, love Alma. <laughs> like, silly check ones the box. Like that. You love me? Yes. Check the box. If I've you love me, that. no. Like, I've, it's just, that's just who I am. But like, I love that he reciprocated that to me. So do you feel like you and him were the same type of person or you guys are opposites? Edgar and I are complete opposites. Opposites attract. There we go. It is that it, we are the, the definition of like opposites attract. Mm. Everybody who knows us, like on a personal level, like our families and stuff, they know that like Edgar and I and I are just so different. So we're like hot and cold. You said like you're you're married, right? Yes. How long have you guys been married? This October we'll be married for ten years. Yeah. <laughs> October yeah. what? October sixth. Yeah, and then my birthday's October 11, so I get double spoiled. <laughs> Damn, let me join in for hey, my, I was strategic. My, my, my birthday's October 25th. Babe, Come on, I was strategic. Okay, it was all part of the plan. Does she get one present or two presents? Two, okay. Come on, okay. That's my dude. Damn, <laughs> I gotta step it up because Brittany, on. Brittany's on the 19th and then mine on the 25th, but I don't celebrate mine, I celebrate hers. Oh, okay, why? Why don't you celebrate yours? I to me, it's like, like the people that know me, like. Every time I get on my birthday, it's like, man, this is another day. Like, thank God, another life, another year. Let's keep going. So, like, when we moved out to the first apartment that we moved into, we moved out on my birthday. They're like, no, like, come on, like, we got to go eat. We got to celebrate. Why are we going to move out on your birthday? I was like, no, nah, this is more important. This is my celebration. Like, this is what you wanted to do on your birthday. That's yeah. what it is. And he never wants to do anything. Just, and like, I go to work, like... Because, like, like, you know how they say, like, love languages, right? Yeah. Like, you you give love the way you want to receive it. Because I love gifts, and, and like, I like to feel special like that. Mm. Like, I always, like, try to go above and beyond for him on his birthday. And he's just, like, like he, he, he appreciates it and he likes it, you know. But that's just, like, he would rather just. So what do you think is the most. Whatever he wants. What's, what are two things that are important for everybody listening in right now that is having issues on relationship? It's important to find in their significant other to make it work. Dang, I don't know. <laughs> you know what? Like one thing that two things that, that you two things that you value, or two three things that, that you three, value. Couple things. Okay, so for me, um, when I met Edgar, I was at a point in my life where I had like given up on love. Ooh. I was there, and I was just like, "Fuck." This. Like, I'm going to focus on school. I get emotional because it's just the truth. Yo. Answer this one, please. Keep going. Keep going. I know you get emotional. It's all right. It's all right. 
She's, I know. She should be outside. Yeah. That there's so many women like that. Yeah. There's so many women. Like, I, I talk to so many yeah. girls. Everybody gives up on love, shop. man. Like, yeah. everybody just, like, you hit that point where you're just like, this is not important to me. But, but why do you think that, what do you think that happens, though, right? Because. Because we go through, like, really bad experiences sometimes or we haven't hit our growth. I heard it from, from somewhere that, and it was on a, on a positive note, like, just because you got done dirty then doesn't mean you give up on love because maybe this person here is the one that yes. is going to, like, you know, make you believe in it once again. But you cannot bring what happened there into this one because now what went wrong there, you brought it into here, and now that insecurity is going to affect this one. Yeah. It doesn't, know, doesn't allow you to completely love and put your love out there. And I, and I tell a lot of people, it's like, yo, if you're willing to give your heart to this person because you feel like they're special – the worst thing that's going to happen is it doesn't work out. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, you're going to be sad. Yeah, you may cry. It's gonna hurt. <laughs> you're going to hurt a little bit, but it's part of life. It's part of being a human. But at least you tried. Yeah. You didn't leave any stone unturned because now you can move on. Go to the, not go to the next like that, but yeah, you no, can move start on. Start your next. Start your next journey, your next chapter. In that aspect of your life. Yeah. And, and that's just kind of where I was. Like, every previous really... I mean, I was young, you guys. I met Edgar when I was 19. I didn't have, like, a ton of boyfriends before I met him. How, many, how many serious relationships did you have? I had never had, a, like, a boyfriend. <laughs> like, a guy who was like, I want you to be my girlfriend. You know? So... Bunch of toxicos, motherfuckers. But oh now my, my, boy, e my boy Edgar out here, he the well, one. I was attracted to, like, really... Like, losers. Like, so, it's just so crazy. I tell him all the time. Like, Ed, everything I'm sharing with you, Edgar knows. So now like, that the good guy finished, like, he finished first. <laughs> Let me the tell good you. guy finished first. Guys, That's what happened. Hold up. Hold, <laughs> the, hold the line. The nice guys don't finish last all Edgar the time, man. Edgar was a <laughs> Edgar was a Podcast toxico. done. Podcast done. Oh, my God. <laughs> what? Okay, so he was like the so definition of, like, the bad boy. We, 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 we <laughs> talked about toxic. So what made him toxic? I mean, you know what? I think I'm the same, Edgar. Let Don't me tell worry you about something. it. Let me tell you something. Here's one thing about me. You can tell me everything about someone, and I'm going to choose for myself how I feel about that person. Correct. So prior to Edgar and I dating... Every, like, my brothers, like, a couple of friends that we had in common were, like, you don't go out with him. Like, he goes out with a lot of girls, blah, blah, blah. He has a ton of girlfriends. And don't get me wrong, he did. Because that's who he was. But they were friends. They were friends. You know? They were friends. And this is why, even though I was at the point in my love life where, you know, you talked about how, like, we don't give up on love and stuff, right? I was that person. Yeah. I wasn't the type of girl who was like, oh, my God, my ex did this to me, so I'm going to treat you this way. I was like yeah. a complete blank slate. Like, okay, that person, whatever, I was hurt. I'm, not, I was, I'm the type of person, like, I'm not going to fucking talk to you, whatever. Yeah. So, like, that happened, and I was just at the point where I was like, <laughs> I, I I don't want to do this anymore. Like yeah. I'm just gonna focus on school. I had three jobs at the time. Oh shit! Like I've always worked very hard. I've never been someone to just, you know, take things. So what changed? He dropped everybody for you. <laughs> for real? Like it wasn't like a oh I was part of his lineup. Like he I think he knew that I was different. Yeah. And that is like where I come in and say to these girls who like come to me with their stories. Because I do talk to so many girls, you know, okay, it's so like the, when they know a guy is going to treat you like how he wants to treat you. Like when he knows, he knows. Just like how uh, it sucks. This sounds really bad. This sounds really bad. But women go through like, oh, he's the one all the time because I'm a woman. And I've gone through that where like every person I did, I was like, oh, I'm going to marry this person. Like, you know, but like this sounds this is the part where it sounds bad. Yeah. When the guy knows that that's the girl he wants to be with, like, he's going to be with that girl. He's going to be with her. So, and that's what happened with Edgar. So when somebody, maybe at the shop, um, talking to a younger self, to, you, to yourself, came up to you and asked you, like, hey, what's the best advice for finding true love? This is a TikTok. I already know I'm going to cut this <laughs> shit for TikTok, so... Um, in my opinion, yes. like, 
what is true love? What is true love? Because I think people need to understand that relationships are work. Like love is is so complex. And and what I tell and, and the people who've gone, I know people are gonna listen to this because I tell this to people so often. Yeah. You have to choose the person that you're willing to work through your relationship with because it's not rainbows and sunshines and love and, and kisses all the time. That's yeah. just the truth. It's not. So you have to pick your person. Is that person respecting you? Is that person showing you your love languages? That's the, the part where you have to be selective of when you're dating, right? Yeah. You have to be selective of, of does this person fall into these categories that, that I want? But there's going to be someone who maybe, you know, checks all these boxes and there's a couple that are not. And that's where you have to choose, like, is this the person, if it's reciprocated, Correct. Is this the person that, and it has to be reciprocated. I can't <laughs> enforce that for both sides. What, what's that famous phrase that I'm going to love us for the both of us? <laughs> you can't or do that. Or be, because that person is toxic or it's okay. Like he's going to learn or she's going to learn or. No, I don't believe can't. in that. Yeah, no. <laughs> no, it has to be reciprocated. Yeah. The respect have to, has to be there. The love has to be there. Like the, the want has to be there. And if that's just not there, then. You brought up something earlier that. This guy right here is driven. Do you feel to find your partner, guy and girl, like you have to be also driven? Because you're a driven person, right? You you own your business. And I think to own a business, you have to be driven. If you got a goal, you have to, like, you have to have it in you already. But when you find somebody else, maybe that person isn't as motivated, right? That's where you're selecting, like, this person isn't as motivated as I am, but... Am I still gonna choose to go through this relationship? Yeah, like that's that's a red flag for you or a green flag. That's a choice that you have to make. You and gotta in live my with opinion, it. in my opinion, if you want to have a successful relationship, yes, having two driven partners is just gonna make your relationship that much more stronger yeah. because the mindsets are very similar. And Edgar and I met so young, like we were. I was nineteen. He had like just turned twenty one. Like. We we were young, like we were in college. Like he used to party like every weekend. Like we're not the same couple. <laughs> you guys, like right now that we're being real and honest, and I, I want, this is why I want you. I want to share this part of our our relationship because like there's boundaries, you yeah. know, that we put up, and at one point, like because Edgar had the lifestyle that he had, and it didn't align with mine. Ooh. Like, even though I was That's 19, important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like, I was working three jobs. Like, I was going to school full time. Shit. I had, like, big goals because I come from a very, like, driven family. So, like, I was that girl in college. Like, it wasn't, like, it wasn't, like, common to see me out. Even when, when like, they asked, when Edgar was, like, I think he had asked somebody when the night that we met, like, oh, is that, is that her boyfriend or, like, is she dating someone? And they were like, no, but, like, don't even try. They were like, don't even try. And he was like, and I was like, he's so cute. And then, like, I gave him my phone number, you know? like Yeah. That's why I, I tell know. people when they hit on Dylan, I tell people, like, bro, like, don't try. Like, my boy here, he's, he doesn't have a heart right now. He doesn't want to love. But they try. They shoot their shot. That's, so that's, he's, he's the one. He's the one behind the camera that, they just get it. It's just his energy. He's one of those that, and for a lot of people, from what we've seen, and we've both seen it, like, even, like, taking it back to the club. When you go to a club and you see those dudes that are just persistent. Hey, what's <laughs> up? Let me buy you a drink. Yo, this, this, this. Or, hey, oh, let's okay. dance. Like, yeah. <laughs> he knows it. And I've seen, like, I've literally witnessed this dude. When they come up to him, he's just like, oh, he puts his hands out and he's just like this. Or, okay, well, I'm going to go back with my friends. And I was just like, damn, my dude. He's just, like, dodging them left and right. It, there's, there's an approach, right? There's always an approach even in when you're trying to find that one of, <laughs> wait, why are we laughing? Oh, there's something going on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Why are we laughing? They, like, locked eyes. They were like, bro, we. Can we swap this real quick so you guys can hear his perspective? Like, this is so crazy. Um, there is a strategy. And Edgar had a very clear Strategy. Are we gonna swap out? You gonna come in real yes, quick? Come, come on, camera still, camera rolling. Camera, hey, 
Cam- Cameron Love Raleigh, you. come here. We have a shot ready. Let's go. Just- it, yeah, bring, yeah. bring your cup. Bring your cup. We're, 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 we're stopping out really quick. You guys are talking about strategy. Like, he needs to say what he did. Come here, bro. Yeah, come here. All right, we're, we're stopping out really fast, my boy. How you guys doing? We're chilling. <laughs> we're ready. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> I know this is my wife thing, so I'm not going to take the shine. <laughs> I'm going to get straight to it. Sorry about that. We're good? All right, so there is, a, there was a strategy, because I knew this wasn't going to be easy. She wasn't like the regular girls that I usually hook up with, you know, that I think you're cute, let's go type of, type of girl. So I met her at a Denny's. She used to work at Denny's, graveyard shift. So Ooh. anybody that goes to the club <laughs> you're knows, there. Knows, where, knows where you're at at 2.30 in the morning. And I seen her working there, and I had this conceited girlfriend at the time. And we got into an argument, and she's like, well, I'm going to go outside. And I was like, well, then go. <laughs> and she left, and I started flirting with her. Ooh. Started flirting with her. But then I was like, okay, I can't flirt too hard because then she's going to think I'm an a-hole, so I'm going to do... He a dog. Little, little flirt just so she gets the vibe, and then we'll bounce. Yeah. I find out that one of my old friends, we were going to go to a party and that she was going to be there. But I already knew she was already kind of like feeling it, so I was like, okay. <laughs> I planted the seed. It was like a two-week so thing. Got to water the seed. Got yeah. to water, water you, your plants, you big got, guys. Yeah, so I planted the seed. I was like, okay. We're going to go to this person's party. I know she's related to, to her. I was like, okay, I think she's going to be there. I'm going to roll up. Sure enough, she's right there. Damn. Bro. She walked away, and I fell in love. If you know what I mean. If you know what I mean, you know what I mean. I see her walk away. I was like, it's a wrap. Started asking about her. Don't try it. That, to me, is go for it. You know, that's another challenge. And sure enough, it was it was... She wasn't like the other other type of um, girls that I knew um, right. back in the day. Uh, even though I was a, a partier and going out and and like to have fun, dude. I had, riding a motorcycle, having a car. The what fat, kind of motorcycle? Uh, Jixer. I come yeah. from 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 that, and I was like at twenty. That was like I was like around twenty years yeah. old at that time, and I was going to school. You know, everything was was going good for me. Yeah, and. Um, I just, just when I seen her, like you just know, like I want that. That's that's the girl I want. So I'm talking to her through to her throughout the night, um, kind of flirting with her, and I knew she had her iPod in the DJ, in like the little like stereo boombox, and I knew it was hers. I mean, he said, "Wait," I was like, "Hey, who's who's uh who's um uh, iPod is this?" Yeah. I was like, "My dumbass said." It's like it's my musical soulmate. <laughs> and she looked at me. So cheesy like, cheesy like, and it worked. <laughs> she knew, but she was still having it. She knew, but she was still having it. She was like, God, oh, you're stupid. But. Yeah. So that's what happened. And then I'm drunk as shit. Everybody wants to go to Denny's. I don't know. This is the first time I've ever been to her house. Everybody wants to go to Denny's. I was like, why are we going to go waste money? It's like, is there eggs and weenies at the house and tortillas? I shit you not. For like 20 people, I made egg and weenie burritos. (laughs) With ketchup and tomato. And she's just looking at me the whole time like, what is this food doing? (laughs) Hey, the whole works, bro. I made the eggs with the milk and the salt. So eggs makes the milk makes the eggs fluffier just in case, you know. (laughs) So, and I, and I got putting in work, making the burritos, and she was just looking at me the whole time like, what is this food doing to me? <laughs> <laughs> so that's what happened. And then at the end of the night, we're going home, and uh, I, she was out front, and I told her, like, hey, is it cool if I could get your number? We're, like, chopping up. Is it cool if I could get your number? And she hits me with a, I don't know my phone number. I was like, oh, <laughs> that's a wrap. That's a wrap. Two my weeks my of fucking work. burritos weren't worth. I spent the hardest game in like the like the history of game, bro. I was on it. I was, on it. I was like, she's feeling it, and she hit me with the, 
I don't have, a, I don't know my phone number. Triste. I was like, uh, triste. I was like, all right. Yeah, I, left, I, left, I, did, I probably did leave a mess. I don't clean up after myself when I cook. That's just, that's just that's facts, bro. And uh, we'll clean up tomorrow. We'll no worry about it. I cook, you clean, type of deal. So he was trying it out, right? You see? There yeah. You so that's what happened. And um, but she honestly didn't know her phone number, so she runs back into the house. And she walks away again, and I fall even more in love. And uh, she comes back out, and she gives me her phone number. And after that, it's just. And now we're here. Ten years. Ten years. About to be ten years later. Thirteen years. Thirteen years. Total. Yeah, total. I don't know if she's better with the math than I am right now, but. Yeah. Damn. Thirteen. Thirteen years. 13 years total. Yeah. That's the story. So, you, you, you want a shot? Do I want a shot? I'll take another take shot. Take a shot. We got to do it because you plan it. Come on, bro. For the history of history, you did it, bro. For the history of history, yeah. you did it. That was a... I did it for the game, bro. I did it for Hey, the but for some... The fools that are watching this, they can relate. When they get a fake phone number or I don't have my phone on me... That's a wrap. That's it. You're just like, oh, you want me? Yeah. I was like, oh, we thought. I was like, all right. I guess it's true what everybody says. Oh fuck! But yeah. hey, but low key, I think that has to be the most, most game I've ever heard someone play. You yeah. fucking cooked. You after being no that. Well, I cooked out of my own self interest because I didn't want to go spend money. I'm not gonna lie. Thank All you. Right. I, I still got some oh. food. You served like a whole a whole gallon in here. But appreciate you All coming right. on. Thank you. Boom, Cheers. telling us your story. Woo. I'll check out. Check out back in Alma. She's gonna verify everything that just happened. Like you said, there is a strategy. So everything he just said right now was true. It's facts, bro. So why'd you give him a? Why didn't you remember your phone? I'm gonna be honest. Like at that time, I had just got like my 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 mom had like a one of those Blackberries. Uh huh. And I had just switched to a Blackberry. So you really didn't know. I didn't know my phone number. And that's why I text him. Like, I asked him for his phone number, and I text him. Oh. Or I called you or something, huh? I don't remember. It was one of those. But I really didn't know my phone number. So hit us with the gem about, <laughs> for a girl, what's the gem to hitting on a guy? For hitting on a guy? I don't we got to normalize this, bro. We got to normalize this. I'm like, I don't have, we, I don't have like, <laughs> much, I don't have, like, much experience. How do you shoot your shot? Like, I don't know. I'm like probably right, not so, the best. And I know you guys have been at this 13 years, but after everything you hear, your experience, hearing your your friends, everything, what do you think is the best way to shoot your shot? Then I think for <laughs> yeah, say you I guys weren't laugh. <laughs> say you guys weren't dating, you weren't married. Yeah, if I oh how would God. you hit on that guy right there? I'm I'm so like I won't talk to to anybody. But if I had to, like, if I saw Edgar and I was like, I want to talk to him, um, like, if he went, if he would have gone to Denny's like without a girl, free food, just with his friend, free food, like, I would have been like, I would have entertained like what he was doing, Ooh. but because I knew he was there with another girl, like, I didn't want to be disrespectful, like, and I knew what he was doing, but I just so happened to kind of know who it was, and I was just like not a fan, and I was just like, she's mad already, you know, like. And and it was it was fun. I could treat him better, you know. <laughs> and um, but like if if I had the opportunity or, or like to to shoot my shot with him, yeah. like um, I would have just like felt the vibe, like maybe start a conversation. I like to talk to people. I'm very easy to like. St- I can talk to anybody, like even if they're like being ugly with me, like I'll yeah. still like I'll still be nice to you and I'll still try to talk to you, you know. Um, but. I probably would have tried to start a conversation with him, and if like the vibe was there, like if it was like if he was like you know shaking your fucking yeah. shoulder, what's up? <laughs> he used to what's make up? me laugh. Oh, he makes me laugh. Like we talk about it all the time. Like that's one of the one of the things that I love the most about him, like his sense of humor. So guys, and, like, do you hear this? To you me, gotta like, make the when girl a laugh. guy is funny and he can like genuinely make you laugh, like like he said, he knew what he was doing. I knew what he was doing. That shit was funny. So we, you know, 13 years we later, laugh about it. here we are talking about and this. And we still laugh. Like, that's one thing that I, I cherish about our relationship is, like, how much fun we have. That's dope. And it's like, we have kids now. We have the business. And, like, it's not easy. Like, it's not easy. Like, having kids, having a business is stressful. Yeah. 
Yeah. And like being in, in, in a relationship, a marriage for as long as we've been in and how like young we were when we started our, our relationship, like it's been hard. And and like we've we've overcome so much, but through it all, like that sense of humor, like that fun, like never left. Yeah. Like that part of our relationship never left. Even though things got hard at times. You know, it would be like a quick little like even if we were mad at each other, like we have this thing. We have this thing where like like, if we're ready to drop it, he'll just, like, look at me and kind of, like, fight his smile. He'll just smirk at me. And then I just, like, if I'm ready to drop it, I'll smile at him. <laughs> it's I, an unspoken thing that we just spoke about right now. I can tell. Um, I think us guys are the same. When this is a serious situation, we tend to laugh. <laughs> we have to laugh, bro. We're just like, are you fucking serious right now? I'm like. No, but Edgar, Edgar is from Zacateca. So, you guys know he has a, he has a temper on him. And when he's mad, he's mad. He can drink then. Oh yeah. He, uh, he's being we he's, told you. He's being modest he right now. I told you. I told he's he being, was the party guy. I had to say where he was from. <laughs> yeah. So. My compadres from Sac I'm from Michoacan. Okay. Michigan. Puro Michigan. Puro Michigan. <laughs> but my compadres from, from Sinaloa, oh my fucking God. He, I think he's at the house right now and I'm like, dude, you can wipe me out. I, one thing about like when I have at the house. I'll give it out. Like, the more everybody drinks and gets it away from me, perfect. Like, that's it. But we got to give it up. 13 years, you guys are here. Business, kids, happily married. We got to give it up. So I'm going to give you guys that. Good. So after all this mess, <laughs> we're bringing them, we're yes, bringing them back. Yes, let's reel it in. Let's, let's reel it back let's reel in. Let's it back real quick. What's the best piece of advice you've ever got in your life? The best piece of advice, yeah. this happened recently, um, being in the business that I'm in and dealing with so many people, um, it takes a toll on you emotionally because yeah. you have to kind of constantly like eat up a lot of people's energies, especially if you're, you know, similar to someone like me. I don't like to, to be rude to people who are mean to me. Like I, I like to kill them with kindness. That's just who I am. I'm not going to, and it's not even in a bad way. I just don't want to put my energy into that. But I have to eat a lot of it because I'm not going to give you the same, right, in return. Correct. So a couple of years ago, um, I had gone through something very serious inside of my business where somebody came in and, like, spoke really, like, down on me Ooh. with my baby in my arms. <laughs> and I, I understood that it wasn't about me. And it sucks that I had to go through that because it made me, like, it made me go through a really bad, like, part of my life where I was like, damn, like, what did I do for someone to feel the it's need to, to do that to me, you know? Yeah. And it took me a long time. And, and one of my friends, and she's in Herbalife, Lori, thank you. One of my friends, she told me to read this book. It's called The Four Agreements. And that book changed my life. If you guys have never read The Four Agreements, when you're dealing with a lot of people, it's important, and this is one thing that I would say has changed my life and, and one piece of advice that I would want to give Shoot anybody it. is don't take anything personally, period. Don't take absolutely anything personally because at the end of the day, you're going to realize that people are a reflection of themselves. Like they're, they're just like they see whatever they see you. They see you happy. They see you successful. They see you thriving, and for whatever reason, something in their own personal life is bothering them so much that they can't stand to see you so happy. Yeah. And they think that their words and their actions and the way that they treat you is going to like make you change who you are. Yeah. But when you are so firm and like, I'm just not going to take this personally, it doesn't affect you. And it allows you to continue moving forward. And those same people are going to see that a year later, you're even better. <laughs> and then five years yeah. later, you're even better than that time. Like and then they come back and they congratulate you. Yeah. That, I think that bringing it full circle, that's just what it is. For anybody that is going to start something new, you know, out of the ordinary, especially from where we're from, like, yo, like, shoot your shot. Keep, try it out. Keep going. The first time it doesn't happen, just keep going. But the biggest thing is... Some everybody needs to realize your own circle that you have at that moment that when you start something it may not be the most supportive. 
your own yeah. family, your own circle of friends. They may not be the most supportive of what your idea and dream is. Fuck them. It is what it is. You yeah. keep going because when shit starts to pay off, we're realizing this now. Everybody starts coming back when they, when you're quote unquote on the top. Oh, bro, you're doing it. Oh, you guys are this, 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 this. And I'm like, oh, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Let's bring up the receipts because we didn't get that love before. It's not that we're we're not big headed at all. We're our ten toes are on the ground, and anybody that tells us, "Yo, you're doing it," nah, not yet. We're not there. Yeah, we're working. Yeah, because you when you're in this when you're in this like state of mind of the pursuit of your goals and your dreams, right? Yeah, it's a state of mind. Correct. Because when you're in that state of mind, no matter what you go through, you're gonna keep you're gonna keep getting up. You're gonna keep getting up, and you're gonna keep moving forward. Yeah. Because you believe so strongly in what you're doing that. Nothing that anyone says to you is going to change the fact that you're still going to get up every single day and pursue your dreams. It doesn't. It it, it really it really doesn't. And how you said it right now about your phrase and some somebody told us during the podcast and it said, "Think logically, not emotionally." Mm -hmm. Wherever you told just told me, maybe it's coming from an area maybe you're missing. It's okay. I'm just the collateral damage that came with it, but it's okay. I can handle this. I can handle you being negative. I can handle you being destructive because it doesn't matter because I'm still coming and moving the way I need to move Yes. in order to get here. In order to succeed in whatever you're doing, you got to be willing to take the hits. Yep. In life, relationships, friendships, it is what it is. It's all going to come to an end at one point and your circle that you're sitting with, your table that you're, that you're making are the ones that believed in it. You know, you don't got to believe in what I believe, but just know that I'm doing it for me. And if everybody wants to jump on this train of success, hey, everybody's welcome. You're more than welcome. Everybody got a ticket. Everybody's welcome <laughs> as long as, you know, it's there. So hit us with, hit us with that, that last phrase, that quote, quote of the day, quote of the week, <laughs> something that when you're going through your tough time, you remember every time. Um, this is a TikTok. I'm going to be honest. This is going to be a TikTok. I already know this. I, I just, I don't know how else to explain that even though I'm going through a hard time, I'm still going to get up. Like, I don't know how to describe, I don't know what the word is. I don't know what the, the best way to describe that. I just know that not everybody has it. And it's, I don't know if you're born with it or if it's something that you can learn or what, but I just know that not everybody has it because when life gets hard, like, don't get me wrong. I'm going to cry. I'm going to, like, be emotional about it. However, I'm going to do that in private, and I'm going to still get up and do it. I'm going to show up to my job, and I'm still going to do everything that I need to do. So I don't know how to describe that, but that's what it is to me. Like, just getting up and getting shit done. Like, I just can't. I can't put it any other way. We got no fucking option. Yeah. We <laughs> got no, no option. There's no plan B. Like, if that's what you want to do, you got to just figure it out. <laughs> Shout out Javante Davis. The Glock is not off of safety. Ain't nobody safe out here. <laughs> but it, it, my thing, and, and it sounds arrogant, it sounds cocky, and quite, depends on how you take it. But, like, when you're confident in what you're doing, like, you know, no matter what you go through, no matter what hit, what, you know, down moment, what sad moment, what struggle, like, you know you're going to get up the next fucking day and still go back to it. Yeah. It may not be working. That's what I tell a lot of people. When you join social media, you may not get 100 likes in the first one. You may not get 100 likes in, or 100 subscribers in the first time. But, yo, keep fucking going. Like, you have no idea. Like people are like, gonna hit. someone like, oh, like, dude, like, you know, you don't get this, this, this. I'm like, bro, like, I, I'm pretty starting. We're lit this is going to be episode... 62. It's going to be episode 62. I, I was watching yesterday episode 3, 4, 5. I'm like, God damn. It's come a long way. It's come a long way. My mom asked me actually yesterday, like, oh, you el Dylan? El, el ya en el programa? I'm like, my boy Dylan was here when I started. I literally podcast with him when I was at the apartment in West Covina. He came through. <laughs> we got fucked up. That's another, <laughs> that's another story. But... People that started when I was there to, like, you guys came here to L.A. For me to podcast here in L.A., and I tell everybody, like, yo, this is where we need to be. 
Like, we podcast in West Covina when we moved into the colony. We podcast in Fontana when we bought a house in Fontana. And something told me, like, yo, in order for you to grow, you got to go. You got to go somewhere else. And I'm like, where does everybody want to come to? Where does everybody want to go every fucking weekend? Where there's pictures, content, content creators. Where does everybody go? Downtown fucking LA. Yeah. And here we are. And, and it's crazy that you bring that up. You were very specific with what you're doing. Yeah. And you understand that, like, it takes time to reach these goals. And like you said, you might not get 100 likes. You might not get all the support. It's not about, um, this what I'm, I'm about to say, it's not about, like, social media can be in, in any aspect of your life. Correct. It's not about that. Correct. It's about you understanding that, like, like I believe in this dream. I believe in this goal. Like, I'm going to keep progressing. I'm going to keep working no matter what comes from it. Yeah. Because that's where it's like all you like this is all love. Like it's not coming from like, oh, I want a monetary gain from this or I want to do X, Y and Z. Like you're just doing you do this. I could tell because you love to do it. I love it. We love it. And you love to hear people's stories. You love to have a good time. You love to have drinks like this is this, you're <laughs> yeah. doing this because you are passionate about this and it, you can feel that. It's a it's a gift that I had to realize at one point in my life. And when. The power above gives you a gift, and you realize it, you got to go with it. Yeah. And luckily and blessedly, the people that we have got to meet, you, Edgar, everybody that's here on this podcast, like, it's changed. Like, yesterday I was with my people, and they are just like, yo, like, your shit is growing. Like, I always see you on the For You page, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, we're just a small fish in the pond. Like, we're, there's a lot more to go, but... We're going every fucking yeah. week. And you're enjoy enjoying the process. We enjoy enjoying the process. The especially, like, what was it, last uh, two weeks ago in San Diego? Uh, man, we had a moment outside. We cried. <laughs> I had a moment with Angela. We cried. And it was a, a life circle moment because the dude that we podcast with, Chris, I used to take photos with him when we went to the, the Fit Expos as a fan. This was like years, like four or five years ago when we went, we took a picture with him with, with the brand he was with, and we took a picture like we we're fans. Bring it back full circle. Now we're in the home, his own city, and we're literally sitting with him podcasting. Wow. And he was like, bro, like, I remember you. I'm like, bro, like, I got pictures of me and you. Like, we took. That's where I remember you. I'm dope? like, yep. And it's dope that we got to meet here for the first time, and we're vibing yes. like we fucking knew each I other know, for like, forever. You're my cousin. But he moves. Hey. <laughs> All right, Dylan, can we're you meet? I'm going to invite you guys when Edgar makes carne asada. Oh, you have to. Yeah. No, no, he no. He makes what? the best carne asada. Casamigo, Casamigo. We need oh, to end oh, this, bro. Okay. We need, I need this. Actually, I'll take this one with you. I'll take a shot with you, too. <laughs> Last, final shot. I'm just kidding. Yes. Okay, sis. Hey. <laughs> yeah, Edgar's going to drive, so I'm good. <laughs> Edgar's like, this is a warm up. <laughs> no, wait, wait, but we still gotta save it because we're doing. Are you guys gonna do the Q and A? The truth or drink? Yeah. You got time for Q for truth or drink? Yeah. <laughs> she was like, like, "How much?" She's like, "Fuck, Dylan." <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. Te pa, te pasas, Dylan. <laughs> Dylan no, no tiene remedio. All right, so for everybody, you want, I want to give a big shout out for my team and everybody because we reached fifty four k on TikTok. So, congratulations! And re right now we are sitting at fifteen hundred subscribers, and it's fucking growing every day. So my team, hey. I got to. You did that. You guys did that. We did that. We did that. And everybody that has been part of the podcast from episode one. Until now, you included, because when this comes out, all the people are going to tune in, and they're going to listen, and they're going to be motivated. <laughs> so just know, and as much as people that give us the flowers that we have built is, we built it because of the people like you that share the story with us and are willing to come and open up. You cried. We're, bro, like, I am so proud, and I'm so blessed that you came and shared your story with us. So I, I do want to, like, I do want to <laughs> give you you the flowers because you're a business owner, you're a mom, you are a social media influencer, micro, right? It was a micro, you said. You got to be specific. You got to be specific, but you are changing the world with what you're doing. And if you can change one person's life along your journey, I think it's so huge and so big because you have a gift. 
You're putting to use your gift <laughs> and your charisma. The last that we're doing is amazing. And everybody that's going to tune in on YouTube, op- Apple, Spotify, everywhere, we appreciate you guys. Make sure you grab your cafecito. If you listen to this this early, 7 <laughs> in the morning, grab your cafe. If you're sitting at night, Either maybe drinking grab coffee, a drink. We're taking shots. We're taking shots. <laughs> <laughs> everybody got to come to LA. Toast to everybody. Thank you. Thank you. I, I want, before you do this, <laughs> I want you to know that every single person I come across, I love to hear stories. Definitely. I love to hear stories. So hearing pieces and little memories that you shared with me today, I just want to say thank you for sharing those with me. I appreciate me. you. Um, I appreciate you taking the time out of your Sunday to continue in pursuit of your dreams. And just, you know, this is going to blow up. You know, I know that you're you're going to grow. You guys are going to continue growing, and this is just what, the beginning. What's our phrase? We're changing the narrative. Yes, sir. We are who we are. I'm him. Let's go. Yes. It toast. It toast Let's to go. Life.